in my quest to find the perfect day pack for my needs, I think this is as close as I'm going to get. This is the Osprey Stratos 34, and I'm going to tell you the good and the bad. Matt, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I'm going to talk real quickly about my final bag, I think, in my quest for the perfect day pack uh, for my needs specifically. And if you've been following this channel, you've probably noticed that over the last couple of months I've churned through a couple of them. Uh, I haven't done reviews on all of them, but you might see them in some of the hiking videos. They constantly change. And that, to be honest with you, is not by design. I am looking for what I would consider the perfect day pack. Now, um, you know, there were a couple of things in the beginning when I started this kind of process of, of wanting a new day pack that I thought I didn't want. For instance, I thought that I did not want hip belts on the bag and it kind of limited my choices, but I ended up picking up the Osprey 26 and I did a video on that and I'll link that somewhere over here about why I didn't fall in love with the pack and some of the major issues that I had with it. The Osprey Stratos 34 is kind of their, I would say, marquee line of day packs. And, you know, not even day packs, this does goes up to a 50 liter, but this is kind of their marquee line. It's higher even than the Manta, in my opinion, uh, simply just because of the build and some of the features that it has on it. So, all in all, I'm gonna talk about some of the positives of this bag, and I'm gonna walk through it and I'll spin the camera around, but I'm also gonna tell you kind of my opinion and what I think is bad about the bag. All right, let's talk about the bag. Um, let's turn it over on its back. And like a lot of the Osprey bags that I have in love, it has the airspeed system. And what essentially this is, is it's that light wire frame that goes on the inside of the pack and it creates this trampoline kind of effect. And what that really does is it keeps a lot of air going through the back of the bag and essentially keeps your back dry and that's one of the reasons why I love Osprey bags so much now granted uh, other companies do this but Osprey just nailed it out of the park there's really ample padding on the shoulder pads uh, a lot of stuff right here for your trekking poles it's like kind of the quick the quick mount for your trekking poles little loops right here for your sunglasses uh, and then the front up here too we'll stay we'll stay with the with the back I should say there's two really healthy hip pockets. Uh, the padding on the hip belt is outstanding. Uh, one of the things that I do like about this bag that's different than the Manta line specifically is the thickness of the actual hip belt. Um, I think it's much thicker, it looks much more beefier and it just fits well when you put it on specifically if you're a bigger guy like me. Um, the Manta line Really, it's just, it's thin. It, it doesn't look like it belongs on the bag. The hip pockets can easily hold an iPhone 8. That's what I have. Moving to the front of the bag, one of the things that a lot of Osprey's upper end bags have is a rain cover. Uh, honestly, I like that they include these. Simply for the fact that where I actually live is pretty arid, but in the mountains where I hike, it can rain at the drop of a dime. And if I bought a pack without this built into it, uh, I could just see one day getting caught in the rain. On the 34 liter bag, which obviously this is, there is a sleeping bag compartment. Uh, one of the great things about this is it does come undone, so you can basically put all of your gear down on from the top to the bottom it doesn't have to have a stop and you have a separate compartment but one of the things that i do do is that is i keep this kind of sealed off even though i'm not bringing a sleeping bag when i go on a day hike but i'll put clothes down here i'll put a puffy down here i'll put a rain jacket down here because it's easy to get to it's inside of the bag because this bag does not have what i would call kind of a stash pocket or a stuff pocket what it does have is it has this back panel zippered part and it's nice, it's great, it's super shallow um, and to be honest with you, if you have this bag filled to the brim, 
you can't put anything in here. You can put, I don't know, like a map. Uh, so if you put something in ahead of time and it's not fragile and you're not worried if it's going to break or if it's going to bend, shove it in there. And you get to this part. This is the first pocket right here. And this little pocket right here is shallow. Uh, it's not lined with anything. I think their intention with this is supposed to be kind of like a glass case area. Uh, but And that's where I put my glasses. But... I always kind of put them in a bag so they don't scratch. You can't put much else in here. It does not get pressure uh, if the bag is fully loaded, which is a good thing. So if you do have to put like your reading glasses in there or your eyesight glasses, I should say, or a really expensive pair of sunglasses, they won't get squished. You're just going to need to put them in a bag. This is a panel loading bag. Uh, so it's pretty spacious inside. No complaints there with that whatsoever. I do like the high vis green. so. If it's darker at night or if it's at the dusk when you start hiking, you can see things a lot easier. Let me shut that. There is another pocket at the top, this mesh pocket. And this is kind of like what I would kind of say is your, your carry-all stuff. You know, this is where you put your wallet, your keys, because there is a key holder right here. Uh, and just kind of little things. I put my battery pack in there for the day. And, you know... Anything bigger, any, anything that won't fit into the hip pockets, like for a snack size, I do put sunscreen in there. If I'm carrying a bigger bottle, if it's gonna, we're going to be going to a super exposed area. So this is nice. My only complaint about this is, is it's not sewn to the bag. So if the bag isn't fully packed up, uh, it will sway in the wind. There are two compression straps right here on either side. And then there is a gear loop. Uh, for you, this is technically for an ice axe, uh, but you know, gonna be honest with you, I've never carried an ice axe in my life, so no need for it for me. And the water bottles pockets, let's move this down real quickly. These water bottle pockets are very nice and spacious. Uh, 32 ounce Nalgene, which is what I carry, easily goes into it. This bag is hydration compatible. Uh, but at the end of the day, they do not provide you with a bladder. I think that's one of the things that's very different. If you were to pick up the Manta line, the Manta does come with a water bladder. This does not. And I think their argument for this being a less expensive bag than the Manta is the fact that you don't get a water bladder. And that's why the Manta is more money. But personally, I think this bag is better than the Manta for a handful of reasons I will not go into. So I've kind of been nitpicking this bag a little bit. But there's one thing that really bothers me about the bag. So really, you know, the biggest complaint I have about this bag is, is these compression straps right here. The zippers on the top, you know, if you keep them at the top and you want to get them down and get something out, you have to remove these compression straps. And being that sometimes I carry a very large tripod, and this is just for me, I have to kind of keep that tripod in that compression strap in order to keep it up. Uh, and on the other side, honestly, like, you know, if I need to get really deep down inside, I need to do both of these compression straps and I just need to undo them both. And so, you know, part of me for a long time thought that I should have gone up to 24 with this, but I'm happy that I went with the 34 simply for the fact that it's got more room. Uh, and in colder weather, when which is right around the corner in Northern California, I'll be able to shove more heavier gear in here. Uh, in case, you know, I get caught into a situation where I need to put on a puffy or something like that. But that's my biggest complaint. And this seems to be a reoccurring theme in Osprey bags. Uh, you know, with the Mana 36, it had that one feature that, you know, once you unlocked both of the compression straps for the top, the whole, you know, the whole back, uh, the whole front of the bag would kind of flop down and kind of be hard to manage. Uh, the same thing on the Day Hike 26, that was an issue along with the water bottles. This is a great pack, don't get me wrong. It's not cheap. Uh, I'll put a link to REI and Amazon down below. I got this one on sale uh, at REI for actually a pretty good deal in my opinion, but all in all, I do really like the pack. I'm a nitpicker. If you haven't figured that out yet, well, you know, you haven't been watching long enough. So if you're interested, pick one up, take a look at it. There's tons of reviews on this bag. I'm sure mine will get lost in the shuffle somewhere, but. I also kind of like to point out some of the negatives, and that's really the only negative I see in this bag. Now, 
just this bag that's the only negative. But if you're using Osprey's Airspeed bags, I think I've said this before, I always think the internal volume is kind of sacrificed just a little. I don't feel like I can get as much gear inside with bags that do not have some sort of suspension system on the back like that, uh, where it's a slight wire frame and everything like that. So, I don't know, that's just my opinion. I'm sure it's probably, you know, it says 34 liters, probably can hold 34 liters, but at the end of the day, I don't know, maybe you do lose some space with the air speeds. Thanks for watching these things. I hope everyone's having a great day. Talk to you soon.